Hello everyone. This week in history of modern Russia, we're going to be examining the formation of the Soviet Union. And the dates I've chosen for this are 1918 to 1924. The reason for those dates is because 1918 to 1921 is the period of civil war, the Russian civil war following, and I'll talk about this in a moment, following the rise of Bolshevik power after the October Revolution, Russia will descend into a civil war that occurs both within the boundaries of Russia, within the boundaries of borderland areas, like Ukraine, for example, and even beyond. And that lasts from 1918 to 1921. The period 1924 I've chosen because that is, of course, the year that Lenin died. And of course, following the death of Lenin, we will see Joseph Stalin uh, maneuver his way into power in the Soviet Union, creating an authoritarian dictatorship that in ways Trotsky, who is pictured here uh, addressing the Red Army, had sort of predicted would happen. Not necessarily Stalin, but and perhaps not knowing that this was a prediction, but uh, Trotsky uh, thought that it was possible that you could have the, the emergence of an authoritarian sort of uh, dictatorship, sort of one-person dictatorship emerge in the way that it did with Stalin. So this is really a period of time where we see the formation of the Soviet Union. And when we say the formation of the Soviet Union, of course, that can refer to many of the sort of uh, boundaries on maps of your Soviet republics are created during this period. Soviet republics like Ukraine, for example, Georgia in the Caucasus region, and, and, and so on. Ukraine, for example, was an example of a Soviet republic that was uh, given status as a republic, as were the others, in part to, to help, if you will, sweeten the bitter taste of being brought back under the imperial control of Russia. Many of those, those if you will, satellite borderland countries like Ukraine, for example, had witnessed independence for the first time during the aftermath of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, which took Russia out of the First World War, and, of course, during the period of the Russian Civil War. And so as they were brought back into Russia, and there were battles fought, of course, in the Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine was invaded in December of 1917 by the Red Army, and it was invaded again. It was invaded in 1920 by a Polish army that took Kiev and then was pushed out by the Red Army as well. So creating these Soviet republics, this is uh, something that sort of changes the map of the greater Russian Empire. But in addition to that, it's not simply sort of changing the map. There's also a lot of trends that are created as a result of this in terms of how the Russian Soviet state would, would govern. Um, domestic terrorism becomes ingrained in Soviet policy. Both Lenin and Trotsky, pictured here, advocated really excessive uh, domestic terrorism as a way to control the people. And it's important to note that during 1918 to 1921, there were uprisings everywhere. The conditions were ultimately terrible. Uh, there was famine. There was in increasing hardship for uh, the ability of people to obtain basic necessities. And as rebellions and mutinies and uprisings and revolts in villages were occurring, terrorism, domestic terrorism, was, was not shied away from, to say the least, by Lenin or Trotsky, but was in fact advocated. And both of them wrote and published on the matter and the importance of it as being used to sort of control uh, the populations. Now, you know, the period after the Civil War, during sort of the most stable period of Lenin's leadership, shall we say, 
is a period associated with the so-called new economic policy. And the new economic policy actually resulted, even though the Soviet state had come to control pretty much every element of, every major element of the economic system, from industry to farming to banking at that time, the new economic policy was actually incorporating a certain degree, particularly on the, on the lower levels of society, of capitalism with respects to people's ability to buy and sell grain, these types of things. And this was done because the situation was so bad uh, for the people, and it had gotten to the point, you had villages, re villages in revolt and so forth, and it had gotten to the point where domestic repression was not going to be the only vehicle. You were going to have to do some other things to maintain control. And that's what led Lenin uh, in, the, in the Bolsheviks to use what's called the new economic policy, which was like a, a, a limited return to certain low-level uh, capitalism to allow people to be able to obtain the things that they, that they needed. And this was, of course, bolstered up with a great deal of political rhetoric and propaganda from the Bol Bolsheviks to use it to sort of continue to stabilize the, their hold on power. When we think about the Soviet Union, we think often about the purges of Stalin. Well, again, the formation of the Soviet Union, the practice of sort of cleansing or purging uh, the party, this is also something that is, in, and it was something, ideas that folks like Lenin had talked about prior, but it's really ingrained in the Soviet Union during this period of formation, um, purging the party of those that might um, be disloyal or threaten the revolution. This, as a result of the civil wars, this becomes a, a, a really inherent function of the Soviet state, which is, it witnesses its most extreme variation, of course, under the leadership of Joseph Stalin, which we will be looking into in coming weeks. I just said civil wars, plural, and that really actually is the appropriate way to say this. The, the, the Russian Revolution, following this Bolshevik Revolution, and the development, particularly in 1918, of the Russian Civil War, really involves a myriad of different conflicts. And there were some sort of pitched battles, but there were also a myriad of smaller level sort of, uh, of, of violence, of political persecutions. It, it really is uh, civil wars, plural, in a lot of respects. At the end um, of 1917, the First World War was still going on, and the Allies were very upset by the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk that, of course, Lenin had made with Germany, the Central Powers, during the First World War. And after that, the, the, the combatant Allied powers, former allies of, uh, of Russia, they actually became involved in supporting um, an army that opposed the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks, here you see Trotsky with the so-called Red Army. The Red Army, the Bolshevik Army, is opposed by the White Army. And the Whites was were made up of or, or led by Russian military commanders from the First World War, and they received assistance and support from other Allied powers, including the British and the French, but also, of course, the Americans, the United States, uh, the Japanese, uh, the Turks became involved in, uh, in, in the efforts uh, in Russia. There was, at the outset, two governments, the Socialist Revolutionaries, the so-called Mensheviks, whose, uh, or at least some of them were the Mensheviks, whose collaboration with the uh, provisional government prior to the Bolshevik Revolution was what led Trotsky to join the Bolsheviks. But they formed their own government in the region of the Volga River. And so there was a period, there were two governments, there was a white army, there was a red army, there were foreign powers engaged in Russia, and this really descends into... Uh, a, 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 a bloody period of time. And, and, and the Western powers did not, particularly after the end of the First World War, the First World War ends on November 11th, 1918, the international parties, they didn't continue to sort of really pursue uh, 
a war in Russia, like, to win it. And the white armies had all kinds of problems. They were really unable to, um, they were really unable to sort of fill the concerns that many peasants had from the Bolsheviks. So, um, they persecuted trade unionists, for example. They had a sort of, uh, language that suggested imperialism and these types of things. And so the whites had a lot of problems and they weren't really able to create much of a, 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 of a unifying force, and when the war ended, you saw a deterioration of international support and a defeat, ultimately, um, of the white armies, again, led by former military commanders from the Russian Empire during uh, the period in which the Romanov uh, Tsar, Nicholas II, uh, was ruling and, and overseeing the First World War. And, of course, terrorism as a, as a tool in the Bolshevik Soviet state, uh, of course, the czars, the Romanov czars, Nicholas II, his whole family were um, were executed at the at the uh, order of the central government in, in this period of time. Here's the factoid, specific factoid this week. Uh, many don't know that in the period of the of the civil wars, that in 1920 a Polish army actually invaded the area of Ukraine, capturing Kiev. The Bolshevik Red Army then ultimately pushed the invading Polish army out of, uh, uh, of Ukraine and Kiev, and pursuing a period of time in which uh, leaders like Lenin and Trotsky would have referred to as the period of war communism. Lenin believed that you could push an international communist revolution they thought in places like northern Italy, or in Hungary, or in Germany, or in Poland, in that if the Bolsheviks, the communists came, that people would rise up against their their governments. And Lenin certainly believed this and, and, and pushed for this, and actually even pushed for this to invade Poland. And many don't know that the Bolshevik Red Army actually invaded Poland in 1920, they were defeated near the Vistula River on the sort of frontier of Warsaw. And they were defeated and they pushed back and it kind of marked uh, an end uh, for that period of time of the idea of pursuing sort of further internationalization of communism through, um, through sword, if you will, through war. And so the factoid for this week is that the Russian Red Armies actually Following a Polish invasion of Kiev, uh, Ukraine, the Russian Red Armies actually invaded Poland and were defeated um, on the battlefield in Poland in 1920 after the First World War. So that's the factoid. I'm going to put the factoid and the extra credit discussion board and the video here all in the same place. So just click on the video, watch it, sort of summarize the factoid and any part of the video uh, that you might find uh, intriguing. And I'll see everyone this week. Uh, let's have a great week. I'll see you in the discussion forum.